everyone, it's Ken here. I bought this EpoMaker SK61 mechanical keyboard recently and what I've noticed is that the driver is really difficult to use because it doesn't have any instructions. And I had to figure out everything by myself on how to use the driver. So what I wanted to do today is to show you how to use the driver and hopefully it will help some of you guys out. To start with, if you don't have the driver installed already, you can go to this link. Uh, I'll include it in the description below. And once you're on the page, you'll notice that most of the things are in Chinese. And that's fine. Conveniently, they put the latest driver on top. So all you have to do is click on this red button over here. It says download and you can download the latest driver. Once you've downloaded and installed the driver, this is what you should see. Right there at the top, you're going to find three menus. First one is configurations. This is where you can uh, remap the keys, set the light effect, and also assign macros to any keys you want. And the, the second thing on the menu is LE files. Uh, LE stands for light effects. Once you're in LE files, you'll be able to customize the different light effect files over here. You will also be able to create your own if you want to. Third thing on the menu is macros. This is where you can customize the macros or create your own. For this tutorial, I'm only going to focus on the first thing in the menu, that's configurations. So I'll show you how to reassign keys and tell you about the different profiles and show you how to assign different light effects and macros. I'll create another tutorial in the future to teach you how to create your own light effect files and your own macros. I created a table to show you what customization you can do on each of the profiles. The standard profile, you can only change the light effects. And layer 1, 2 and 3 are the same. You can do key mapping as well as assigning macros. And for the driver 1 profile, you will be able to do all three. So to change the light effects in the standard profile, all you need to do is click on the standard profile. Uh, if it's not working, you can click on another profile and then click back because the, the driver is a little buggy. You can pick a total of five different light effects to be assigned to the standard profile. They won't all show up at the same time. What you need to do is first pick the five that you want. So I'm just going to go with full red first and then let's go for full blue. And then for this one, let's go for a breathing green, confirm, and I'm going to leave these two. Click on save and then apply. So let's go to the keyboard now and see exactly how these light effects show up. So if you don't see any lights, don't worry. Go back to the driver again and click on driver one profile and then click back on the standard profile. And that's it. You should see the keyboard lights up. And to go to the next slide effect, just do FM plus close bracket. And then you can keep doing that to rotate through the light effects that you chose until you find one that you like. Okay, now that we're done with the standard profile, I'm gonna show you profile layer one, two, and three. Uh, they are exactly the same. So I'm just going to use layer one as an example. So the things that you can do in the layer profiles are key remapping and assigning macros. Let's start with how to do a key remap. So the first thing you should do is click on the layer 1 profile and decide on a key that you want to remap to another value. So let's say T for example. All you need to do is click on T and you'll see that it starts to flash. And underneath you'll find all the different values you can assign and you have different tabs that gives you different options. So let's say I want to reassign T into the number 2 on the numpad. I just click on the numpad tab and click on number 2. And this is when you can click on save and then apply. And now whenever you type T the number two will show up. You can still type the original value T if you want. And all you need to do is press FN first. That's located at the bottom right of the keyboard. 
So you press and hold Fn and then type T and then you'll see T comes out. And if you don't press Fn and press T, you get number two. Now if you want to cancel the remap, all you need to do is go to T over here and then click on the bin icon and click on save and apply and that's it your T is back to the original value and next we take a look at how to assign a macro there are a list of predefined macros over here and these macros are really designed for games but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to show you how to assign a macro. So in the future, if you have your own macro, you, you'll know how to assign it. I'm just going to click on this first macro. You can go over to the left and pick the key that you want to assign the macro to. Let's use the letter T again. You'll see that it starts flashing. And now you can click on this view button over here at the bottom right. And then you should see that the macro name is now flashing on top of the letter T. And now you can click on save and apply. And that's it. And coming to the notepad here again, whenever I press T, the value of the macro comes out. And it works the same way as key remapping. If you want to type the original letter T, then just press Fn first and then type T. And when you want to remove the macro assignment, you can do it the same way by going over here and then click on the bin icon. And then click on save and apply. So that's what you can do for the layer profiles. Now let's move on to the driver one profile. So you start by clicking on the driver one profile over here and for driver one, you can do key remap. You can also assign macros. These are done exactly the same way as layer profiles. The only thing that's different on the driver one profile is how you assign light effects. After you click on the profile, you go to the right side over here and select one of the light effect profiles that you like. You can also search if you already know the name of the light effect you want. Uh, I want to have some waves. Let's go for the Wave Rider. So once you've selected the light effect that you want, go down and click on View and then click on Apply. Let's go to the keyboard now and you should see the Wave Rider light effect on your keyboard. And here it is, the Wave Rider effect. Success! There's also something else that you could do in the Driver 1 profile and that is assign a light effect to a specific key and it activates on key press. So for example, if I want to assign a light effect whenever I press the enter key, what I need to do is go over here and then click on the three dots. And I'm just going to pick magic waves, confirm, save and apply. And now when I go to the keyboard, when I press the enter key, I can see the magic waves appear. And if you want to remove that light effect assigned to the enter key, just come over here and click on the bin icon. Click on save and apply. That's it for this tutorial. I hope that helped some of you. I'll create another tutorial in the future to teach you how to create your own light effect files and your own macros. Thank you for watching.